what do you say to a young aspiring actress in high school in Fort St. George about heading out? Well, that's an interesting thing because I think if they want to do film and television and they really do, I think they should do it because it's, it's a young person's game, it seems to me. There's so much stuff out there for young people. And, you know, I talk to young 22-year-olds and they're too old by that time to play the 19-year-old because they want a real 19-year-old. If film and television is their goal, there are uh, schools that do film and television. There are great teachers in Toronto who do classes and things. I never think training is a harm just because I think it widens your perspective. Even, you know, but what city do you want to live in? I don't know about theater schools now. People want to go to a theater school, I say talk to someone who just graduated, talk to someone who's in first year. Because they change, they morph. Whoever's running it, whoever's teaching. Do you mean U of A, you mean U of National, a, theater, National school, theater School, Ryerson. George Brown, Humber, Ryerson, and they all now, because of government funding, and to keep, they need to specialize, right? So maybe for Humber you go for devised theater, or George Brown you go for something else, right? So now they have to specialize more. It's hard to get a, a fully well-rounded education in practical theater, I think, because, because to stay alive, they have to find certain niches. And if the young person at Fort St. George said, I want to work in theater, what would you say to them? I would to say them? you need to train. I need to, you need to train because it's recreating, recreating every night. And so you have to have craft. Oh, there's that word, craft, technique. Technique gets a lot of bad press, you know, but basically if you're not feeling it one day, you still gotta give up the goods. And also, your fellow actors, you, you know, you have to be spontaneous in the moment every time. But if you decide to do something just because you felt like it that night and change all the blocking, all your other actors are going, what do we do now? How do I get that, that, that thing is no longer there, we'll improvise around it. I'm not sure with a company that does that, that constantly improvises, different thing. But I think, um, you know, consistency and recreation, it doesn't mean staleness, it means being able to find the spur again, find the, the trigger again to, and it's never the same, it can't be the same. That's a great release. I remember Kristen saying, there is no way you can ever, ever repeat what you did. So it's not in repeating. And what would you say to them about pursuing a creative life? Yes, we need more of it. I, I'm also not one of those people who says, if you can do anything else, do it. Because the creative life is so hard and full of rejection. It is, it is. But you know, when the recession came, I went, great, everybody's living like an actor now. They don't have tenure, they don't have uh, pension, they don't have job security. You, you, you have to accept change. And that's a great life lesson, to learn to live with change, because it's very hard for us. Who were your mentors? Mm. Uh, well, I had many. I mean, I've talked about, you know, Elizabeth Walsh and Bridget Harrison, and then there were theater school mentors. You know, Douglas Rain was the head of the theater school when I was there. He was very specific and language oriented and disciplined, disciplined. Um, and Martha Henry came to teach. And then I saw the David Foxes and Charmian King was a great, uh, for me, a life model as well. She had such, I don't know, vivacity and she was a broad and she was a dame and she was a, a good actor and, and she made me laugh. And, and uh, you know, I worked with Martha Henry, uh, Franny Highland, I remember all these women. It was also interesting, the ones who were, who studied here in Canada. I thought, oh, you can do it in Canada. You don't have to go away. You can study in Canada and work in Canada. And, uh, and then I had, you know, great teachers, you know. I worked with Bernard Hopkins, he was a mentor. John Hirsch was a mentor, Lakai Bryan. You know, when you feel for a moment there's a champion in your corner who believes in you. And then, of course, Miles was, was a mentor who became a partner. If you became the fairy godmother and you could plant one seed in that young actress in Fort St. George, what seed would you plant in them? Faith. Faith, I think. I think, uh, 
I think the great uh, heroines in Shakespeare's comedies are rewarded for their faith. Their faith. Their optimism there. You know, when I was a kid, somebody asked me, why do you want to do theater? And I said, to save the world. And I was serious. I didn't mean it like I was going to battle and be on the front lines, but I thought to remind us in one of the last secular gatherings, live gatherings, where we all come together, why we are what we are, all our frailties, all our flaws, but that we still, the very act of doing it is an act of optimism to me. When I see, even I see a play that I think is terrible, when I see those actors up on the stage, take their curtain call, I'm moved because I think we're still here. We're doing it, we're talking to each other in a room life size, not the screen bigger than life, not the television smaller than life, life size. And we are uh, gathering together in a forum. I think that's an act of optimism because it reminds us we all share the planet right now. I think any classical play is contemporary when you do it because you are doing it right now to an audience in 2016 they're hearing it, and we live in 2016. And so if we're all in the same town, we probably experience the same weather, maybe the same breakfast, certainly the same headlines, what's on the news, what's in the zeitgeist. We all bring that into the room with us. When we did Orpheus Descending, it was the flood in New Orleans. And when they talked about the levees breaking, everybody's antenna went up. When we were doing Henry V, and it was uh, in 9-11, in you start the chorus speech, I mean, everybody's there. You come together. People have said, I had to go to the theater that night. Aleppo. Aleppo, right? You, you, you know, it's, 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 uh, it, it, reminds us in a sanctuary of uh, who we are, that we're not alone, that we've experienced these things and have experienced them and will experience them. And um, I think hopefully renews faith. You come, I love doing a tragedy in the matinee because you come into this dark place on a sunny day and you come and you experience Medea and the horrors and the, the fear, the fear of that happening and, and, and who we are capable of being and the acts of atrocities, the atrocities that we can do to each other. And then you open the door and you go out into the sunlight and maybe today, you know, you'll be slightly changed or appreciate that sunlight and go, that's what I don't want to do or did I learn a lesson there, or for a moment I was out of time. Now I'm back in it. Which is the illusion? Which is the illusion? Because basically we're just pretending. I think so. <laughs> Thank you, Shauna. Thank you, Robert.